Hello, I'm Brian Painter of the Oklahoman. Thanks for joining us for another segment in a series in which we're talking with Oklahomans who are in professional baseball. The whole purpose of this series is just to provide insight for you, the player, the coach, or the fan. Today I'm joined by Jordy Mercer. After a great career at Tologa High School, he went to Oklahoma State where he earned multiple all-conference selections. Uh, but besides being an outstanding shortstop, let me give you an idea of his junior year. He had 14 home runs, he had 60 RBIs, and he had nine saves. In 2008, the Pittsburgh Pirates selected Jordy in the third round, and last May, he made it to the show. Uh, he had 28 games at shortstop, he had seven games at second, and an inning at third base. Thanks very much for joining me. Thanks for having me. Jordy, if you will, just kind of uh, tell me about does a guy more often than not get into trouble, I mean E4 or E6, a middle infielder, does he get into trouble physically or mentally? Which is a, more often than not, where's that error going to be made? I think it's more mentally, to tell you the truth, because um, uh, in practice you physically prepare um, over and over till you get it down you know, to a key, to, to perfection, you try to, try to do perfection. And then when the game starts, it's, it's all mental because you already know how to do it, it's already physically done. And so if, if uh, an error happens or something happens, it's, it's mostly mental. All right. Give me an idea from the time a guy steps in the box, what are you reading? Oh, you're reading swing path. You're reading, uh, you know, you, you got some, some scouting reports on him of, of his previous at-bats, uh, previous games of what he's done. And so you have a good idea of, of uh, you know, say he fouls a pitch off or, or he lines one the other way, so you might want to take a step the other way. Or it depends on what the pitcher's throwing. You always uh, try to sneak in some signals to, you know, try to stay uh, one step ahead of the hitter. All right. We're going to have you show us a couple different things. Proper procedure on a ground ball with a forehand play and then also backhand, okay. uh, if you will. Yeah, that'd be great. You always want to get in the right position. If you're... Uh, you know, not paying attention, whatever. And if you're a split second off of anything, your angle's gonna be messed up, you're not gonna read off the bat very well, and you're gonna get an in-between hop, something that, as any infielder would say, that you don't wanna do. You wanna be in the best position possible to field the ground ball and to make the throw and to get the guy out. So we're gonna show you a couple how to do it. Ready position, throw it, create the angle first. And as you create the angle, everything's starting to push this way too. So it makes you easy on your arm, and if you move your feet, easier on the throw too as well. Cross over. Oh, we're going back in. <laughs> My bad. Start that one over. We'll go back in now. Same thing with same thing with forehand. We'll do the back end. Make sure you see right at the back. Cross over first. Glove down the ground. Field it. Now, now we're on the back end, so we're farther away. You have to move your feet, get it going, get it going, make the throw. That's one thing about a, a back end. Is, is a little bit tougher than a forehand is because the backhand, you're farther away from the, from the base and all your momentum's going this way. So you have to plant, you plant your feet over like this and then once you fill the ground ball, move, 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 make the throw. We'll go forehand, we'll go forehand one more, again. Forehand crossover, same thing. Come get it, see you're already going this way. Perfect. Same thing was back, ready position. Yeah, back in crossover, down, momentum's over here. I got all my weight on my leg right here. My glove down, up, shuffle, shuffle, throw. That's basically it. That's basically the same, it's basically the same move as when you're starting position because you're crossing over and you're getting in the same position. You can either come forward to get it or if it's hit harder, come back and get it back here too as well. And same thing with the back end. Exact same thing, ready position, you're crossing over. You see the ball off the bat, you either gotta go this way to get it, or you can come up, same thing. This hit slower, come up and get it right here. But make sure you get on the inside of your foot, the weight on your knee. Shuffle, you're good to go. You know something that just came to mind? You're playing mainly on grass surfaces now, is that correct? Right. Uh, more and more it seems like we got a few more high schools going right. to artificial turf and all. Is there a huge difference in playing that? There is a little bit different. It's a little bit quicker. It's a little bit faster. Um, the ball is a little bit uh, bouncier because it is turf. Um, but you know what? 
uh, why, t why teams in, in uh, you know, high schools are doing this because of the rain and, and you, can, you can play in pretty much any kind of weather now and, and it's low maintenance, you don't have to you know, take care of as much and the grass is always green. So uh, that's one thing that, uh, you know, that a lot of teams are doing it, a lot of high schools are doing it and it's low maintenance, um, easy, easy to take care of and, and you're always uh, able to play on it. All right, thank you.